Hello and welcome to the Power Couple Podcast, where we get to listen to love stories and learn about relationships. Today, our guests are MC Red Cloud and Crystal Lightning. Together, they are also known as Lightning Cloud. So thank you both for being here with us today. Thank you, Mr. Jacota. We are, we are very happy to be on your show. It's yeah. going to be sick. Thanks for having us. You know, first, I'd like to, you know, pay homage to the creator for all things to align for us to be here today. I also want to pay homage to the traditional territory that I'm broadcasting from our Algonquin relatives. So, so shout out to all our Algonquin territory out here. And if it was up to me to pick from A to Z, lightning cloud would be indigenous legends to me Ooh. in full color. You feel what I'm saying? For oh, those who know this couple for real, for real, you're going to get that on a whole other level. So shout out to the two of you. And uh, the two of you have obviously shared some incredible moments together. Not only are you both amazing human beings, but your parents, your MCs, actors, entrepreneurs, as a duo, you've won multiple Indigenous Music Awards, Best Rap Hip Hop Album, Best New Artist, MC Red Cloud has broke the world record for the longest freestyle 2014, 18 hours straight. Founders of 1491 Publishing, Indigenous Legends Coloring Book, founders of Indigenous Angels Radio, and your music careers are unparalleled. True artists with real talent. Again, thank you both for being here today. That's dope. Wow, that's I think that, that might be the most amazing introduction that we've ever got. Thank to, you. to hear it back is pretty dope, you know, to, wow, we've done a few things together. We've done, we've done a few things together, that's <laughs> a fact. Thank you for that. Yeah. Honestly, it's out, just, though. it's really just paying homage. And I think it's just out of respect to be able to know a little bit about your background, where you've come from, some of the accomplishments. It's really just paying homage to the two of you. So I wanna make sure you have the chance to introduce yourselves. And while doing so, let us know where you were born and one of your favorite childhood memories. Ooh. Nice. Um, well, I'm from the Enoch Cree Nation in Alberta, Treaty 6. Um, I was born here, but I was uh, raised, I grew up in, in Los Angeles, California from eight years old to um, about a year ago, I moved back home with, um, I had my son here and uh, we kind of moved here just because of, of um, well, culturally, we want our son to grow up here um, for the first few years. And then Cloud got a really like amazing job here in Alberta. So that's where kind of the wind took us this year. So here we are. And one of my favorite childhood memories would probably be, you know, something that sticks out to me is um, as kids, um, my mom was, a, my mom was, was, a musician growing up and so we would always go to Venice Beach every Sunday and um, her boyfriend <laughs> David Shelley he was in a blues band and so every single Sunday afternoon we were allowed to hang out like on the I don't know if you've ever been to Venice Beach but it's just a boulevard of like live music and we were the only kids allowed in like that spot because like our stepdad was like in the band so that's like one of my favorite memories every Sunday every summer that's where we'd be hanging out. And we just felt so cool because we were like, yeah, we're in a lounge <laughs> on the beach, you know? It was really fun. Amazing. Ooh. Amazing. Right on. Yeah, I'm MC Red Cloud, born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Um, I'm Huichol, Wirarica Nation, Mexican native. What's up? What's up? Um, man, uh, one of my favorite childhood memories, when I was just like four maybe five years old, I think five years old, because it was like right around kindergarten. And one of my earlier memories, I took a bottle of Tapatio hot sauce and I just chugged it to the dome to impress my older brothers who thought it was the most gangster thing. <laughs> so that was one of my childhood memories. And wow. That's where Tapatio comes from right there. Listen, I love hot sauce. I don't know if I love it that much. That's, <laughs> that's extra. That's extra. Yeah. So just real quick, uh, how are you doing through COVID times? Yeah. Uh, well, to be honest, you know, well, it's it's really unfortunate what's what the world is going through right now. And we have just um, 
I mean, our heart goes out to everyone who's lost someone to this virus. But like for us, we were able to, because we had a newborn son and um, like my work was put on hold, but I already was approved for a second season in February. So I was like, like kind of good because I knew that I was going to be working in nine months or so. So I was able to spend time with, with my son in his first year of life and really bond and really um, just kind of reflect on myself and read and uh, study my craft mm. and, you know, watch master classes and just, you know, get our home together. Cause like we re, re we relocated from California to Alberta. And so we like took our whole lives. Mm. And so it took a long time to like get settled and make our home comfortable. So that's how it's been for the last year um, for me. So it's actually been okay for us. Nice. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. I've been uh, getting some really, some good work, some good contracts. And but at the same time, you know, me trying to make sure that we follow all the COVID-19 regulations and, you know, stay in as much as possible. And I'll be the runner and I'll grab all of our things. But as far as like work, networking, uh, career wise, 2020 wasn't that bad for us at all. Yeah, we found different ways to like creative outlets, you know, I mean, through YouTube. I mean, nowadays it's like technology is so amazing. You can use your iPhone to make anything so we've been like cooking videos working working out videos with my son like he's been doing like skits and just find different ways to stay relevant and creative you know because we need that otherwise we'd be like we're stuck yeah (laughs) we uh we started the radio station before covid hit right so when covid hit everybody was like oh man these guys are jumping right on it and getting online and putting stuff out there we're like no we were just trying to put some stuff out and just keep it keep native hip-hop active keep all eyes on the scene and keep you know our fellow artists you know busy and give them another level to blow up on so uh we had that going and the coloring books where we were already like in the in the basement like already whipping up the next few <laughs> projects thinking that we have it ahead yeah. but then everybody's like yo we're all going online and we're all trying to be witty and crazy so that's really good you know i noticed like that's it's a it's an interesting thing to hear you share because you know like you mentioned kudos to all those who are going through the struggles and you know how COVID hit them for real and those who are no longer here but you know in my circle immediately um, most of us have been able to dig deep into our own inner self and do a lot of that inner work um, find some creative outlets do things that we never had time for before so I think that for some of us it's been an awakening and in some ways you know this is like prophecy where it's like that eighth fire is is really manifesting in our time indigenous people are rising there's a lot of success that is still taking place so it's just a really interesting time so i wanted to ask that question to to hear your feedback you you said it right there man like how do you force a generation to get as creative and as artistic as humanly possible and here it is you know what i mean um yeah yeah this is this is an incredible time 2020 um we, we, we're very lucky too. Like if we think about where we were in LA, like if we didn't come here, like we'd be, we'd be out, we, we would be, yo, it, check it out. So I would have spent all my money on coloring books. Cause I'm going to hit the powwow circuit. Cause I'm going right. to go to Denver March and gathering of nations and ASU powwow. And then I would have got the news that they're all closed. No right. tours know nothing and then she i was i was your stereotypical actor a year and a half ago bartending and djing everything's closed all the dj gigs are done like we would have been seriously like done so what right. how do we survive and you I'm, know so it was such perfect divine timing that it all kind of hit when it did we were already here you know yeah. so man it hit a lot of our uh, tour homies up bad yeah. so we Big know time. that we, we know pretty close that like damn the our fellow artists were, were hit hard by this touring. touring. That was like, that was one of the things that have really stuck with me. I, I don't want to spend too much time on this specific, you know, content, but like synergy has been common, you know, how all things align, things are meant to be just the story you share, like everything connected perfectly for you to be exactly where you're meant to. So synergy has been a big, you know, thing I've been reflecting on a lot lately. So aside from all that, take us a little bit back to who you were before you met? Like, what were your lives like? What kind of things were you doing before you crossed paths? Well, I was, um, I was, I was DJing full time, uh, DJing all over the place and 
Um, just, you know, I was always auditioning that was always there, but I was focusing on just trying to, to um, I was studying at the Beverly Hills Playhouse. So I was always working on my, and then I just had, you know, my DJ stuff and yeah, that's what I was doing before we met. Yeah. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was emceeing, uh, still rapping, still performing, just, uh, uh, doing a lot of shows like with, uh, comedians and J.R. Redwater and improvising a whole lot, really stepping up my improv, my freestyle skills. That was a good year for that. Uh, I remember when I met her, I was just like, yo, I'm going to, I don't know, I was going to go break a record or anything anytime soon, but I knew that I was like, yo, I had to be at a point where my freestyle is top notch. So I remember when I saw her, I was a uh, top notch freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, still then, but I was in training for sure. <laughs> so when you saw her, like, what was that moment? Where did you meet? How did you cross paths? So, I mean, I've, the Indian community in LA is real small. So we all mm. kind of know each other, or at least have heard of each other. And so this is Crystal Lightning from Three Ninjas. That's where I first saw her when I was a little kid uh, <laughs> on, the, on Three Ninjas Knuckle Up. So I was like, you know, oh, look at the cute young native girl. And then she was uh, re after, around that time, she's like, yo, that's homegirl from American Pie Bandcamp. And then uh, we both got hit up separately. Uh, I was seeing someone, she was seeing someone, but we went to a, a photo shoot for Native Threads. Remember that clothing company? They did a catalog and they got a bunch of dope skaters, actors, models, a couple rappers to try on their stuff for the, for the new catalog that's coming. Adam Beach was there. Right. It was cracking. Um, <clears throat> so we both saw each other there and uh, I was dating some other girl at the time. And then uh, I was still like, yo, who's this? <laughs> oh, that's Crystal Lightning. I was like, hey, get out of here, girl. You're <laughs> crowding my space. <laughs> Love them. That was the first time I saw her, but I was like, yo, she's so beautiful. And uh, Aww. yeah, and then um, I met her a couple more times. She had a boyfriend at that time, you know, waved high and then just looked at her boyfriend's eyes like one day, homie, you <laughs> out of here. <laughs> and like magic, I invited her to a show and we had a show in Long Beach. And it was just this real dope hip hop crowd, just all black and Mexicans in there. Just had, it looked like a scene from Eight Mile. Everybody's hands are up. It and, was. And I was rocking the mic and I was freestyling my ass off. And then Crystal walks in, I think with her mom. Yep. Yeah. They came, they came to my gig, you know, after like bugging them a few times. And then she's, when she came in, my freestyle changed and I started rapping about her. Like <laughs> Crystal lightning, this and that and making it rhyme. And then I get off stage and I'm getting the, the daps, but I go straight to her and I had like 20 bucks in my pocket. So I was still like, Hey, can I get you a Corona? <laughs> and, uh, you know, got her boom, sat there, talked about it, ignored everybody else and just focused on her. And that was the first time I was able to really talk to her and, uh, and enjoy the scene. And that's such a good little setup. I felt like the mat. <laughs> wow. Is that, you remember it the same way, Crystal? I do. I remember it the same way. However, I was not going to date a rapper like that just wasn't going to happen. I was like, OK, you know, you know who was trying to hook me up with him is my mother. My mother was like, I want you to meet this Red Cloud guy. And I'm like, but Red Cloud is a rapper, mom. I, you know, I I don't want to. She, had this, stereo, she had this idea that we're all in the studio <laughs> with girls. Right. And no, just, I just my you know, my mom was was. My mom always, did, my mom dated musicians. And so I knew how that was. And I just had mm. like a stigma about it. So um, it just was, you know, it was like, no, a hard no. But then he was so charming. And yeah, like he said, when I walked through that door, I was like, oh, this is Red Cloud show. Okay. And when he started freestyling about me, what I was wearing, I was like, oh, okay, my ears are open. <laughs> and like the door opened. And then we went on this date. The next day, um, he, he, he said, can I take you on a date? Can I take you for pie? And I was like, oh, that's different. Mm. So we went to this little coffee shop, you know, with the old waitresses, like 70 years old with a big bouffant. She's like, what can I get for you, honey? You know, like the old school waitresses. <laughs> so I ordered apple pie and he ordered like blueberry pie. And then after the date, he dropped me off at home. He didn't try anything. He was just like, you know, I had a really good time. And I was like, <laughs> okay, this guy has some game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yeah, how, too. that's how it started. And then, that you know, right. then he was like, anytime you have an audition, I'll, I'll read your lines with you. And then he ordered these um, special nail pens. Cause he's also an artist. 
And he said, you know, I want to paint your nails. And he came to my, my place with my grandma there and my mom there. And he did the most amazing art on my nails. And I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> like, okay, you want to paint my nails? And <laughs> Painted, to, painted my DJ hand. cases and I was like, okay. And he started, and then this is what, what got it. Um, so we had been now where we were dating and he asked me to be his tour DJ um, mm. for this tour in Canada. Cause he said, you know, my DJ can't cross the border. I don't know why. And uh, you're Canadian. So can you be my DJ for this run? And, and uh, he's like, I can pay you. And so we went on tour together and then, I think we fell in love on that tour. Like it was just pretty, pretty amazing. And then he's, he's like, I wrote, he wrote me a song. He's like, Hey, I have a surprise for you. Sat on the couch, put the earphones on me. And he, he, I didn't know he pressed play and it was a song written about me. And I was like, okay, here's my panties. No. <laughs> Whoa. They're suave. He really was. Whoa. Very charming. Jack Oda knows what it what, it, what it's. Look at the way he's dressed. He's a gentleman. No, you know what? You know what? I wanted to reflect on that. Is like, it's rare to meet men these days, in my opinion. And and I don't know if you can contest to this, Crystal. Is is men with gentleman protocol? You know, to prove that they're they're genuine. They mean well. They're not trying to disrespect the sacred feminine. And I think you know to hear you share that story about it. I think is so important and i'm so happy about it to hear it from a couple like yourself so that those who are listening other other men other women who are out there to kind of set a standard you know to understand how to show genuine respect and genuine love for the person that you want to care about especially if it's long term so i think that that gentleman protocol is is hard to find so yo hats off hats off to you real and you know if i can add you know i had a lot of walls up you know, mm, and he just rapper. He was very exactly, and he was very persistent. And I just, and he just kept showing me love and showing me love and showing me love. And you know, eventually, it just, I just said, "Wow, this guy's for real." And he still to this day, you know, um, is still the same man that I met. Even, I mean, where your love grows immensely during, you know, everything that you go through, and um, it's just, you know, real true love is is out there for anybody who doesn't think that it's real. It really is. Yes. Very sweet of you, my love. Patience, <laughs> patience is real too, you know, and yeah. and uh, I think that was amazing. I appreciate you sharing that. So, you know, you talked about how you fell in love on tour. So what is what is it about that moment that you knew that they were the one for you, that you wanted to spend the rest of your lives together. You wanted to, you know, have a long-term relationship. What was that thing that you think really helped make that decision for you? So for me, it was, it was the moment I knew that he was a hundred percent. I, I, I felt the total commitment and I knew that I wasn't, I didn't have to feel insecure about, you know, infidelity or uh I, I just knew that he was all he was in love with me and I could be feel safely in love with him too because of the past that I had been through um it I just knew that it was I don't know it was just time and time again of him proving himself to me and proving himself to me and then one day I just said wow he really does love me and and I love him and let's just love each other without any walls and just full 100%. And that feels so good when you're both in it together and you just feel this safety together. And it's just, you can just let it all out without protecting yourself, you know? Mm. It was just, it was beautiful. I think it just clicked for me. Nice. For real, like, uh, you know, you get this love at first sight thing, right? Where you're just enamored and you're just like, man, she's beautiful. But any 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 person with a brain wants to back up that claim and make sure that there's evidence there. So it was like at the first couple of dates, you know, and then I think after the pie, we went out for a movie and we just couldn't keep our hands off of each other. And we were just so, it was just so uh, alive. I felt so young and just so happy. And um, man, you want to nurture a relationship when, when you feel like it's valuable. You, know, yeah. you really want to invest into it. And just by our conversations, I knew that I, I deserve someone like her and that she deserves someone who understood her career as an entertainer. You know, she's an actress. She can't have, you know, a jealous man by her side trying to get in the way of her dreams and, you know, 
and maybe she could understand that I'm a hip hop artist and you know I, I need to be I have a I'm fragile because I have this art form that I have to share with the world and so we needed that balance mm -hmm. for each other and I'm like man as soon as I knew she can feel that and hopefully and I thought man as soon as she knows uh, that you know I could feel hers then I think that's when like the love at first sight was like secured mm -hmm. wow I think a couple, a couple reflection points on that, you know, when Crystal was sharing, she can feel so a sense of like internal spiritual awareness, I would say that you were being committed to that this man is committed to you and you didn't have to worry about any of the bullshit. Yes. I think, I think that's so important. I think as indigenous people tapping into that inner spirit, that inner, you know, voice, that's so important. We need to nurture that. And so to, for, for women out there to really listen to that, to develop that concept around trust. And then for, for Red Cloud to talk about how I deserve someone like Crystal and she deserves someone like me, I think is so important as well. Like there's so many dynamics around that, that I'm sure we can kind of, you know, weave in and out of around securities and finding balance and all of those things. So for you to bring those, those comments up when you're sharing, I hope that our listeners are picking up those really important facts that help maintain and build a solid relationship. Mm -hmm. so, well said. Yes. Yeah, for real. I think that's yes. cool. So as, as much as things were, were solid and smooth and everything was, was flush, what was one of the most difficult situations that you both had to overcome as a couple? Man, I think it's living in L.A., like that financial as soon as we were both like in moments where we were like man life is expensive mm. and we both had to just put our heads together on how to overcome i think finances yeah and so sometimes he would you know that never broke us but we, we were struggling you know financially so sometimes he had to go on the road for like you know two three weeks and i was and I, we just miss each other so much but we know that we have to like we have, this has to be done, you know, yeah. and just being able to hold it down and, you know, stay close and communicate, you know, but that was tough. We, we really, I mean, we were, we were broke, man. We were just, we were broke. Like it was hard. We, we were that typical uh, struggling artist in LA, you know, like trying to struggle however many jobs and, mm -hmm. you know, going, traveling hours and hours just for a few hundred bucks, just so you could barely make yeah. your rent and barely make this. And we always said to each other, like, we're going to get through this. We yeah. got, we, <laughs> we, we have to stay strong together. Like I won't, I won't end this because you, you're broke you, or I'm broke or whatever. Like that's not, we get to keep our love strong. Yeah. Mm. We always said that to each other just to check it, you know? And yeah, man. I'm so glad we had this talk the other day too. Like, look at us today. Do you remember seven years ago? Do you remember four years ago? Do you remember three years ago? You were like, man, how we get, <laughs> we may, <laughs> we have a, we, just real quick. Anything. We have, we used to do these uh, weekly freestyles on YouTube yeah. and we have one called Top Ramen <laughs> that we did. Yeah. Uh, I'll send it to you. But yeah, we, we, we wrote one called Top Ramen where we were like, yo, you got to find creative ways to make Top Ramen, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We found, we found creative ways to let the money stretch, but we did yeah. it together. And when you overcome, you know, something like that and you also hit success together, it's like, yo, who got us but us? Right. So going through those difficult times, how would you say that as a result of that, has it brought you closer together? I mean, you've kind of highlighted some of that, but like, how has your love grown over the years? Because just a small anecdote, when I was just, you know, doing some research and checking out your dynamics as a couple, checking out different videos when Crystal's hanging out at one of Red Cloud's freestyles and just seeing your interactions together, you honestly carry an energy where I think it's a manifestation of what Crystal was, was talking about in the sense of just no walls. Like you look so real and it looks like you've been together forever. So how has your love grown over the years to really continue to maintain that together and like keep that spark going? How do you keep that spark as a couple? Man, I mean, yeah, you, you, you see each other through thick and thin. You know what I'm saying? Like at, at your weakest points, and when you make each other strong, you hype each other up like, baby, like one day, so the right person's going to see you. Baby, the one day, you know, you're going to be in that film that's going to, that, that you've been wanting to get your entire career. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just, 
It just, maybe it's not now, maybe it'll be in a couple of months. I did yeah. it be in a couple of years, but we just, we've always hyped each other. We were never like, yo, uh, maybe you should you know, see about, you know, if uh, UPS is hiring. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you know what I mean? And even then it's like, okay, it's UPS. And then we're going to go do some master classes, And then we're going to go buy a book about this person and that. And, you know, we just have each other's back. So like when you see each other struggle, then you make it through that. And then you see each other succeed and you make it through that, man, that really helps your love grow for each other. Cause then you like, you have, again, you know, no walls. I know that no matter what happens to me, she has my back. Yeah. yeah. And when you find someone that wants to love as hard as you, mm. it's just the most beautiful feeling ever because usually someone's always chasing and someone's always kind of, it's always like a cat and mouse game. But when you find someone that's like, I want to love, and I want to love too. And then you're just like, no holding back. It's just beautiful. That's the one. Yeah. Wow. Honestly, that's, that's an amazing way to articulate it the way you both did it. And I like to kind of emphasize some of those points you're making is that full commitment of willing to love each other is, is so important to get you through those hard times. And instead of picking on each other for those struggling moments that you might not be at your best, instead of picking on each other, you empowered each other. And I think that dynamic is so important. So I think that's solid. So I really hope our listeners are, are picking that up. And so yeah. we can kind of transition a little bit, you know, having a, a new child into the family, like how has having children influenced the dynamics of your relationship? You know, I thought our love was, was, you know, it's very intense. It's very beautiful. We respect each other so much. And then once we had a baby, it was like, Oh. <laughs> I didn't even know like that was possible. It just, oh, it just like opened up this vortex of just beautiful everything. It was just amazing, um, you know, because we 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 were together for a while, and because of um, kind of the financial situation, and just we were scared to have a baby, and we didn't know if we were going to. And then finally, we just said, let's just have a baby. Let's just we 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 love each other so much. We want to have. We want, a, we want a beautiful baby. So then I got pregnant and then we were doing a show here actually in, in Edmonton, Alberta at the River Creek Casino. I'm seven and a half months pregnant and my water breaks. <laughs> Let me hear you say, oh, oh shit. Oh, oh. oh damn. Lyrically, I intertwine. She's running around. I'm like, oh. what's going on? No, really. And it, it happened early, six weeks early. So um, yeah, I went straight to the hospital and he had to go back to LA to get all of our stuff and, and our, you know, a couple of his bros to help him load the U-Haul and drive here. And I'm in the NICU for 21 days. And so he made it right on Father's Day, um, the parking lot. Yeah. So it was, um, it was, man. It was it's like a movie. Yeah. Sorry. I went on a little tangent, but oh, like, man. Just to answer your question, it's how has it affected our love? It's it's made it um, bringing a child into the world from love is just the most beautiful experience I think ever. And anyone can feel so that you're both in it. Again, I keep repeating it like you're both in it together. Right. We both want it. Mm. We both, you know, you look at this little being that you created. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> a little being. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You hear people say like, oh, look what our love created, right? Mm. we made our, our love created this baby our love child wow. and it really is that we you really look, mean that yeah, yeah you look at your wow. kid and you're like man that really is like we see both of our uh, both of us in him and it must there must be something in our dna that goes ah you know we're our, our jobs as human beings is now fulfilled we've brought somebody that's both of us into this world and then he'll continue the legacy it really has that undertone to it you know what i mean yeah, and the fact that there's a little half crystal lightning, half red cloud upstairs sleep training right now, <laughs> it, it, you know, we giggle about it and we're like, okay, and, it, and then you go, you know what, it's, it's bigger than us now. Mm. It's beyond us. Mm. You have to think for somebody else now. Right. So it, it really ups your level of love and your level of commitment. Like you have to double up. Whoa. Yeah, I, I, I find it incredible to hear you talk about intentionally making a child together out of love because you love each other so much that that's that's a gift you want to give each other and yeah. commit to like that is 
so beautiful and and intentionally wanting to do that together you know it wasn't just like a fun night and then you found out or something it was so intentional let's do this it was a commitment and it's actually reminding me of this teaching that i received a while back from an elder i was listening to a podcast i wish i remembered who it was but she was explaining how powerful it is to intentionally ask the spirit world to bring that child into the physical world you know that intention and bringing a child into an environment with love and and safety and security is so important and so that teaching of being able to you know connect to that higher self to creation to creator and commit to each other i want to bring a child into this world together i think is like one of the most significant ways to really conceive a child into the world like that's incredible that takes the you know jelly bean to a whole other level like that's bittersweet <laughs> you know what i'm saying i love it oh. and if, I may, if i may add too we, we also have um you know coming from our family trees mm. like transgenerational traumas and all mm. of that other stuff that we said we have to break the cycle if this happens so i think that's why we waited so long too because um we knew that we were um for each other and we said okay we're we're gonna do this and it's a big responsibility and the fact that we get to experience all of the little things together with this we're like wow how could like the single moms out there like the stuff that our parents went through and our grandparents like whoa not to have that support with each other because it's still hard with mm, two parents right you know so imagine so it just really it was really like man we have a chance to to change the narrative now and change the um stop that that cycle you know so amazing that's Perfect. so significant so I think just a small transition from that question, how, you know, it, it, there's difficult times in raising a child, right? There's difficult moments you both have to overcome together. So when, when life decides to test you, how have you been able to overcome adversity? Like, how do you manage a disagreement, for example? We, we have a really good uh, agreement to where, you know, if we have any issue or if we are, uh, have any problems with each other or any questions or any whatever our little beef is like we take care of it right there you know if we have to both take a walk or if we both have to get a yep. deep breath no matter what we won't go to bed upset at each other yeah. mm. or we won't go to bed without the problem resolved we won't let it go into the next day if we're too angry like in our in our communication after whatever we'll just okay you know what we can't talk yet we'll still let some time pass and we, we communication is just key and knowing how to speak to each other with respect mm -hmm. you know um is big uh yeah we talk about everything like we really do yeah. if we're let's, let's go talk outside all right mm -hmm. what was that about well, yeah. okay i'm sorry my bad i'm going through i'm, I'm yeah. i've had a bad day you know yeah. sorry mm -hmm. i took it out on you i'm sorry yeah, yeah. and there's so much power in apology mm -hmm. you know just own own it i'm sorry yeah, yeah oh yeah i dropped the ball i messed up babe and now i see what you're saying also also acknowledging how they feel. I hear that you're saying this, this is why I did it because I'm a dumbass and I love you, my bad, let's go have dinner. And then it's over and it feels so good. And yeah. it's almost like this, again, a double up on the other side, like you're right. in love more. Like, man, I'm so glad I can talk with my girl about anything, even when I'm having a bad day, you know? So that's really good, man. That's how, that's how we, that's how we, we keep that adversity out. Yeah. Of it. Oof, it's done. yeah. Right. So communication yes. and acknowledgement. Yeah. is very important yes. is there anything that you intentionally don't do during a disagreement is there something you're like we're not going to ever do this like i'm never we're never going to swear at each other we're never going to do abc is there anything you decide not to do in a disagreement we never go public with our drama whether mm. it's family whether it's each other we never ever uh, well, I wish somebody in this house would do this and that or say that. like we're not even sneaky, Got low you. key, nothing like we honor each other and we don't even leave time in the air for her to say something on her phone or for me because we take care of our situations wow. right then and there. And if we can't, we acknowledge that, babe, I need to go for a drive. See you in half an hour. Bam, go for a drive, smoke one, come back. Right. You know, go back to where you were. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but we also do have some boundaries. Like we ne never call each other names or anything. Like mm -hmm. if I'm mad, I'm gonna yell. That's just part of being, you know, expressing uh, your emotions. Yeah. I'm gonna cuss, but we'll check each other on raising our voices. Yeah, mm -hmm. like okay, you know what? It's too heated. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's chill out. 
because then it's gonna get because yeah. then I'm gonna throw the table outside, <laughs> right? Yeah, because yeah. you still don't know what I'm trying to say. You still don't right. know why I'm mad. I man. think that's the biggest yeah. thing is when you don't under you don't under you don't get what the other person is feeling. No, that's not what I feel. That's not what and it's frustrating. Right. So you just talk about it until it is. You need to know clear. what what why you're upset. And I want you to know why. Acknowledge mm. why. That way you know how I, that you know that you could step into my shoes. And once you acknowledge that on both ends, like you can get to you can get to the next step of the argument. Which wow. is the healing, right? Yeah. I think that's the little therapy lesson we gave each other. <laughs> nice. Nice. No, I think that's important for, for new couples to kind of hear what are some of the things that are important to do when you get into those scenarios of a heated argument or disagreement. You know, it's, there's not a lot of education out there. And that's part of the reason why I was so excited to do this podcast is like really talk to couples who are going through it for real, who've done it for real and hear their insights. I think it's so amazing. And speaking of insights from the perspective of your traditional teachings, which ones are the most important to you and how do you integrate them into your relationship? Uh, in, in Korea, they have something called wakotuin, which is mm. kinship, wow. which is like this friendship, this family, this bond, wakotuin, and sakituin, love. So those are the two big teachings that we keep. So we try to uh, keep uh, Kisik involved in the drum. Uh, we have powwow time. We have Cree numbers and Cree alphabet hour. And just to get him into the culture, uh, making sure that the language doesn't die, not just with Kisik, but with us too. So we're, we're, we're heavy on trying to grow that with our language and, uh, and those two, those parts of the teachings. And that's one reason why, and the main reason why we wanted to move back to mm. Crystal's territory here in Mashkekasik, uh, the yeah. land of the medicine. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Is there uh, just to kind of, as we slowly wrap up here, what is one of the favorite performances that you've had together? Is there a favorite time where you're both on stage that really stuck out because y'all have traveled to Winnipeg multiple times for Aboriginal day live. Like I love those sets that I was able to catch. You've traveled across, across turtle Island. Is there a favorite performance that you both really love doing together? I had two. Nice. <laughs> Too. Um, one of them was we did this contest called Battle for the Best Who's Next um, co uh, contest in LA and just like long story short um, it was this contest that his brother was like hey you guys should enter this contest and we we're like ah no there's like 3,000 people he's like just enter it you can get a beat from Timberland you can you know win some money yeah, and so we ended up entering this contest and it was all voting based and people were voting for us. You submit a video and a live performance and people started voting for us. And pretty soon we're top 2000, top 10, and then top three. And then we win the West Coast out of 3000 MCs. But the same contest is going on in New York. So the guy from New York won, then we, so now it's, they're doing like an East Coast, West Coast thing. Right. So we do the South by Southwest battle there in front of Kendrick Lamar, in front of Timbaland, in front of both big radio stations. And we ended up, okay, so we did a live performance and then they had to freestyle against each other. And you know, this beast. Mm -hmm. So he ended, <laughs> up, he ended up winning. We ended up winning um, the whole contest. So performing in front of, um them and then we got to open up at powerhouse powerhouse is kind of like it's kind of like um hip-hop woodstock <laughs> yeah right. exactly but we opened for you know chris brown Nicki minaj tyga uh, the game the game ASAP like Rock, just yeah Kendrick. yeah so that was uh, i think a huge accomplishment that we that we did together because we we did start from the bottom and like we just kind of worked for it and we're like okay we do have a chance let's go and then we did that and then my second one was one year for aboriginal day live in winnipeg at the forks oh my gosh i can't even it's just when you when we looked out into the crowd and there was just a sea of people i think they said there was like five thousand people in the in the audience in the crowd it was just from you can't even see where it ends and we had pyrotechnics on our stage and they had those, you know, those huge like movie theater screens back right. there so people could see us. It was just, the energy was, was electric. It was just amazing. And you're on this 
adrenaline high for like a whole day afterwards. You're like, wow, look at what we get to do with each other. Right. That's freaking amazing. It was just <laughs> amazing. I'll never Fun forget Fun fact it. before Red Cloud shares, I'm born and raised in Winnipeg. So like to see that it's just, there's, there's a nostalgia to kind of not see that those sets, like it was crazy. So we love just a little anecdote, you know what That's I mean? That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That is a trip, bro. And um, I'm sure Red Cloud, you probably would say the first time you freestyled and, and wooed your, your partner there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's obviously gotta be one. And I'm speaking for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be number one, Long Beach. Just wobbling my 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 wife, my my soon to be wife. <laughs> Crazy. That was amazing. Um, my biggest, my favorite show. I think there's also two, and one is Mazatlan, Mexico. Mm. Like with freaking pyramids behind us, just a sea of people with their hands up. We killed Mexico, so I think that was like a huge yeah. accomplishment. And, I think just that whole weekend was dope because we were at the beach and eating seafood and just loving life. Uh, so that's a big one. And we did the Inspire Awards. I think mm. that was in Calgary. Right. Um, and that was one of my favorite because um, we had Maori dancers, right. you know, traditional everything, yeah. you know, haka, the, the works and half planes powwow dancers oh, fancy wow. shawl all on the same stage that performance is on youtube put inspire awards yep. ind yeah like you inspire inspire awards lightning cloud and you'll see like this insane opening that was you know out of some movie where you know where me where, where maori meets you know american indian and it just was this insane love collaboration yeah wow uh, i'll never forget that performance mm -hmm. that's one of my like my go-to like if i like if i need to submit for something <laughs> yeah. see, let me see what your live show looks like <laughs> this is what they yeah. all look like right in higher <laughs> awards no doubt no doubt i honestly feel like hearing you share about your favorite times like as a young person you know um i idolized those stages growing up in Winnipeg, seeing those Aboriginal Day Live and seeing all the rappers on stage. Like I was in a time in my life where I was like idolizing that moment. Like there was a time where in indigenous hip hop was at like a crazy peak, you know, and the indigenous music awards, like that was a place to be. And when you got the awards and going up there, it felt so surreal. It's so much has changed over the time. So I really think there's, there's a lot of like, um, sentimental value when I've, you know, was doing some of that research and learning about some of the things you share, like I've kind of been around there and I've seen some of that. And so it just resonates really deeply. And so as a couple to share stages is profound. Yeah. Can't believe I get to share the stage with this girl. <laughs> profound. <laughs> in your town. Crazy. Oh God. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, one of our best was in Winnipeg for sure. Oh, my God. oh man. Oh, uh, we, uh, was oh gosh we had bro we have like 10 phenomenal we had the aztec dancers in Winnipeg. Yeah. so our, our baby our baby's still sleeping so we're yeah. good we're, we're okay. good on time perfect perfect um but yeah the rockabilly one we didn't get to do that one because we got rained out but we flew out we were doing you know because you always have to reinvent yourself right to right. stay you want to stay relevant Facts. so and you always want to keep people excited about you, right? As yeah. an artist. So one of the years we had, we were doing rapabilly. So we had this full on rockabilly, like stand up bass, boom, da, boom, da, boom, with, and this Japanese electric guitar, phenomenal. Just sideburns, pompadour, like really full just. Full-blooded Japanese, barely spoke English. Huge hair. And, and we were gonna do, and we all had our half, our face painted with half, you know, Day of the Dead because it was in November right. and we were ready and we had a mix between hip hop and rock uh, rockabilly Damn. and it was Sick. this beautiful collaboration. And then sky bridges had to come out and say, you guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but because you guys have fire in your show and it's Fire raining, roll. he's like, you literally lightninged out the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> lightning. There was lightning outside. Damn. Um, 
So we had to cancel it, which was like, oh, we had so much to show you. But, you know, right. we came back the next year. With Aztec dancers. So we were just like, bring us right. back each time. We'll do something incredible. <laughs> I really, I, and I know that we're kind of dating ourselves when we talk about this, you know, COVID-19, because who knows where these podcasts could go in the future. But I, I think that there's such a damper on that you know, being able to go on stage and perform live in front of human beings, mm -hmm. like as an artist, that's so important. Yes. And it's, it's medicinal and it's ceremonial and you get to showcase your best part of you. You know what I'm saying? So I really hope that things at some point that there's a light to the end of the tunnel. Cause I, said, I missed the Powell trail this year too, you know, yeah. big time. But yeah. you said it's medicinal or our it's bodies medicinal. need it. Yeah. It's therapeutic. We, yeah. We, we, we live off the energy the yeah. crowd gives you back. And there's Real just talk. this relation, there's this chemistry yeah. that you can't even put into words that we both need, you know? They want to disappear from their lives. And nice. we, we love the, the, just the art of the live show, the art of people getting a babysitter and shaving and they got to dress up and they got to put cologne on <laughs> just to go see you rock right. the mic. Crazy. Like how beautiful is that? They had to make plans. Yeah. They had to go fight, figure, you know, just to yeah. come and see you. And it's just like, you want to honor that and give them the best live so, show you could possibly give them. Yeah. And the look of like, that was a good movie or that was a good TV show yeah. or that was a good performance. <laughs> like that's the reaction you want, you know? No good doubt. Job. Oh, that's no what doubt. I need. Yeah. Amazing. So simple question, maybe not, but what does, what does love mean to you? <laughs> it's a good one you're right it's something so simple but like what does it mean to you mm. what does love mean to me love means um you know you're talking about relationship love like between us right because yeah. there's family love there's love right. that um i think it's it's a it's a respect for each other it's um love means I want to make him feel, um, I want him to know how much I love him. No, mm. how do I answer? You, it's you a know, tough one. It's not is, easy. What does love mean? Right? Yeah, it really is. I, this is what I'm saying is there's not a lot of opportunities to learn about these things and articulate them and understand them. Right. So I just find it an interesting question to ask couples who, who live it. And even though you're living it, sometimes like, have you reflected on what that means for you is also different. So I appreciate, I appreciate the attempt either way. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's this feeling of like, I want, when you want, uh, when you'll give anything for somebody and mm. you want their dreams to come true and you want every, everything that they, that they desire to happen. But it's also the opposite. Like she's, she loves me by making sure I don't eat too much, even though she knows I love bean burritos and tacos. <laughs> she loves me so much that she's going to make sure I eat salad. And she's her language mm. of love is taking care of me like that. Nice. So it's like giving your everything, but also taking care of each other. Yeah. So it's like you want to spoil, but you also want not to spoil so much that they that, that you hurt them. Mm. It's, like this yeah. wonder, it's like this wonderful balance mm. where you have to love them in every direction yeah. and in every angle, even in ways where you're like, is that love? Oh, it must be love. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, a really interesting book is called the, the, the Five Love Languages. I know exactly that book. Yeah. Everybody should read that book. Yes, everybody should read that book. It's not necessarily what is your love language, but what is his? Because exactly. that might not be mine. You know, um, maybe he he likes um, physical touch, physical effect. Of course he does. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, like, or he likes verbal affirmations or, you know, gifts. Everybody's is different. So learning your other person's language of love is important. You know, I know that he likes me to cook for him. And so I make sure I try to cook for him as much as I can. And, um, you know, yeah, raise him one. every time I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, that's a big one. I, if, if you don't mind, I can indulge. We only have a couple more questions left. So to indulge, like I read that book at a time in my life where my parents divorced mm -hmm. and I was going through the struggle. Like I was so upset because both of my parents raised me to emphasize the value of family and togetherness and how important that is. And so for them to, you know, go their separate ways, I was just so angry and I was young. So I moved out on my own and I started getting involved in street life. Like it was a huge impact in my, in my 
whole life situation. And I had one of uh, one of my friends, female friends, and she was just, we had a deep conversation and she's like, you need to read this book. And I was not into books at the time. Trust me. I'm like, who has time to read this book when I'm trying to just break bread and pay for my rent and do what I got to do. But I took it seriously. And I ended up reading this book and understanding those five love language, quality time, acts of service, physical touch, gifts, and words of affirmation. It helped me identify that my mom's love language, I actually got her to do the test so I can even elaborate. She tied at physical touch and words of affirmation. So she needed to hear the I love you's, she needed the hugs, you know, the cuddle time, whatever that is. My dad, on the other hand, his love language is acts of service. Mm -hmm. So he may not necessarily say things like, I love you. He was brought up in Kingston, Jamaica. So he's gone through his own situation and developed himself as a man. And so, you know, communicating love is very different for him. So he would go out of his way to be like, I'm going to fully commit to the family. I'm a cook clean for you. I'm going to, you know, fix up the basement. I'm going to take the kids to soccer practice. I'm a coach. I'm going to do all the acts of service necessary. But when I come home, I just need my time alone. Let me just lay on the couch. Let me just do what I got to do. And so it helped me understand how their dynamics started to go separate ways because wow, we're communicating bro. each other's love language, right? Like my dad was communicating his love language all the time. And my mom was trying to communicate hers, but it doesn't resonate the same for my dad. And so it's easy for relationships to start to go their separate ways. So to learn that changed my whole perspective on my family, on my dad. I was like, okay, like, now I can start finding my balance. And then I started realizing like, what am I doing? You know, like, what am I, why am I putting myself in these dangerous situations and harming myself because I was upset and uh, it changed my whole life, to be honest. Wow. wow. So Thank that book is significant for real. That's beautiful. for real. See how, so someone always feels hungry mm. and unsatisfied and hungry and searching for that fulfillment, right? And right. they were both missing it. So that's really beautiful that yeah. you saw what was, you pinpointed it. And at the same time, your dad's like, I'm doing everything I can. I'm right. providing, I'm doing this. And then your mom's like, I'm doing everything I told him. Exactly. I love Exactly. Yeah. But it's not the same way. Still missing each other. Exactly. Yeah. So very significant point to bring up. Um, so what advice? Nice show you got here, bro. <laughs> What's that? Nice show you got here. Nice. No, I think it's it's amazing to hear from couples. The dynamic is positive. It's, it's about empowerment. So I appreciate that compliment. But what does a power couple mean to you? Um, I think a power couple means that you, you really do support each other in your togetherness, but also in your separateness too. Mm. Like he supports my acting career and he knows that sometimes I have to go and film for three months without him, you know? And sometimes I know, like he said earlier, that he has to go on tour for two months without me. And that's supporting him wholeheartedly, 100% in that and not giving him anything to worry about emotionally while he's gone and him the same way. And then also when we're together, um, uplifting each other and really, like he said, too, is wanting the best for that person. Mm. For real, like the jealousy thing. There's no I think a little bit of jealousy is healthy, yeah. but not not in a dysfunctional way. But um, there, it's just pure support, you know. Right. Um, so I think that's what makes a power couple is just supporting each other together and separate. And the fact that we just ended up doing music together was, right. was awesome. You know, right. that doesn't happen all the time. Um, that we got to be creative together was, was really fun. And it was such a beautiful experience. Um, but that's what I think it means. Nice. Right? I think she's a hundred percent on point. It's, it's also like, uh, you're both dope independent of each other. Right. You know, you, you, you both are, are good without each other, but why, you know, why not be good together as well? Yeah. So, so you have to absolutely support each other, each other's craft, be there for each other. When she has something, I'm her number one fan. I'm out there putting it down like more than the, her co-stars. I'm just like, yo, sharing every little thing. Cause yeah. I'm uh, cause not, not, not because I have to, but because I'm deep down, just like, this is my wife's moment. Mm. And you know, I want her to shine dude. And I love being able to step outside and just letting her shine because yeah. it's her time to shine. And uh, that's what power couples do for each other. You know what I mean? 
they uplift each other, they're there, they support each other, they know that they're both got individual crafts, so they both have to be their, their cheerleader, their, their motivator, they're each other's therapist, they're each other's everything, you know what I mean, and each other's lover, you know, you got to be it all, and when you're a power couple, you got to be like, okay, you know, my man, my girl, you know, good on her own, but better when I'm behind her. Yeah. Mm. And it also keeps things fresh too, because when he's off doing his thing, when I'm mm. off doing my thing, we come back to each other. It's like, you almost get to reset, wow. you know, you get to reset and you get to miss each other. You still talk every day, but it's like, you miss each other physically and, and you, you miss just being together. You know? she, she's leaving me tomorrow, bro, for two weeks. Crazy. And I got to be like, <laughs> follow your dreams. <laughs> I was going to say, even the way you said that, it's like, she's leaving me, man. Two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. <laughs> man, she's going to go be on TV again. <laughs> but it's a good problem, man. It's what's right. with, oh, man. Yeah, and I have quality to be, problem. And I got to be like, yo, I'm here, me and the baby. We're going right. to be holding it down over here. You go act, go kill it, memorize your roles. Right. I got baby. Exactly. Yeah. So then mm. I get to go there and really feel secure mm. and really focus on what I have to focus on because I know that my man is is good and he has my back and I have his. You know, I think that a lot of um a lot of the the difficult part too is like if you if you're even one percent like, oh man, I don't trust them all the way. Trust is is key. Um and then you just feel this insecurity and it's just poisonous, I feel like, you know? So it takes a long time for some people. Like it took, it took me a long time to fully commit and give in myself. Mm. Me too. You know? Yeah. So. <laughs> um, nice. But may I add too, it, it doesn't always, I do feel that sometimes people come into your life um, to teach you lessons. And sometimes there's relationships that last a year, sometimes five years or whatever, but to walk away with learning something from that, you know, not beat yourself up because that wasn't, you didn't get, that wasn't the one, you right. know, it doesn't happen sometimes early. Sometimes it happens later after you've learned a couple things, right. you know, each person helps you grow into a, um, a new person, I think. Facts, facts. Power. Wow. I think I want to echo how important it is to love each other together and separately. I think when you first initially think of a relationship, it's everything together. My life doesn't matter anymore. It's about this new thing. And so to hear that from the two of you emphasize how important that separate time is and, and how Red Cloud emphasized, you know, supporting each other in that distance is so important too. And then how Crystal was able to feed off that being like, that made me, that makes me feel secure when I am away because yeah. I know that my partner has my back and that mental space to feel light enough to know I can commit that's mental health. Like that is so important. And so to, to really hear what you're talking about in, in regards to that, I think is extremely significant. Mm -hmm. um, so what advice would you give to a new couple? You know, let's say I'll even add some anecdotes to that. A new couple who are in the entertainment arts or acting industry what advice might you give to a new couple that meet and want to, you know, build a relationship together? I would say um, the advice I would give is communication. You got to talk. You got to talk when you're feeling a certain way. If something makes you feel insecure, if something's making you feel uneasy, talk about it. Your man will say, you know what, babe, that's not how it is. You know, I would never do that. I would, never do, <laughs> I would never do that. No, I'm just kidding. No, but I, I, I say it's not for everybody, but if you can manage to um, really, the jealousy thing I feel like is hard, you know, mm. uh, because yeah, there's going to be girls that like him. There's going to be guys that like me that are fans, that are supporters. Right. And at the end of the day, you know that you're going home together and don't let that sabotage your relationship talk about it, you know, and it's also my job as his wife or his girlfriend to make him feel secure. Like, no, babe, that's, we're going home together. The jealousy, I think ruins a lot of mm. insecurities, ruin a lot of, uh, a lot of creative opportunities together. Yeah. And like, uh, don't, don't carry over your past relationships and put it on your new person that you haven't fully given a chance to. There's some couples that are like, 
oh, I believe me, I've gone through hell with this guy and I guarantee, you know, and then you mm. give the same person the reaction that homeboy has built right. for three years on your girl. And then Man. you get that on the first time reaction. You're like, yo, yo, yo. Trigger. So that's, that's red flags in some relationships. Homeboy will be like, yo, she's maybe this isn't the one. She's kind of wild and strung out. But spend, spend, spend the first, spend the first time, you know, building trust, spend the beginning of a relationship, building trust with each other, having each other's back, uh, uh, enjoying that love uh, that you get when you are a brand new couple and all that stuff. The way you call that little transition, uh, honeymoon the phase. honeymoon phase, right. enjoy that because it's, it's, it's always beautiful, good, but then also enjoy the struggle, the top ramen you know, yeah. see if you can see, see if you uh, still have chemistry when you're broke, right? See if you still have chemistry when, when she's sick or when you're sick, see if you still have chemistry when you're at a low point, when your family is, you know, bringing you down, you know, see if you still have that chemistry under every circumstance, under every, you know, temperature of water. Uh, and that's, what's going to build your, the character of your relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm, building the character of the relationship is the result of, identifying your compatibility traits yes wow yes also on the other side too maybe if you see a few red flags in someone listen to that because that's your intuition Mm. so that's on the other side you know of right a lot of people Mm -hmm. turn you know just because they want it so badly they'll turn some flags green and say Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter i'm i I need this in my life i need something i can't be Mm -hmm. alone Mm -hmm. Ah. You know what? I think I have one question left. So I'm going to take advantage of this moment with the two of you, but it's like that, that idea of falling in love with the idea of that person I find is what happens usually in the beginning It's falling in love with the idea of, of each other. And another connection in my mind right now that this is reminding me of is there was this couple, Megan good, I, you know, Megan good, the actress, right? Yeah. Her and her husband, they wrote a book together called Wait. And what really stuck out to me when I was just listening to their interview was that they built a relationship on celibacy. So what that allowed them to do was build a relationship, getting to know each other versus it being, you know, intimately motivated. So I think just learning about compatibility takes time because it takes time for you to get to know the true character of somebody or, you know, for you to open those walls up and really trust that person to be your authentic, you know, honest self. And so to hear you both talk about compatibility, I think is really important as a kind of uh, advice to a new couple. I think that's, that's really important. Yes. Wow. That's crazy. Yes. I actually have a little, a little story about that. So when we first started dating, um, can I share that story? Yeah. Why not? (laughs) So, he was like, hey, why don't we move in together? And, tell him why. Well, we were already staying with each other. We like, were already. Right. Yeah. But right. but I was like, oh, no, <laughs> like, I'm not going to take care of a man. I'm not going to mm. like all my stuff started coming up. And, um, you know, and I was like, you're also a rapper. Like, you know, what if you can't pay rent? Like, I was just so filled with fear because of everything. Right. Yeah. So he said, well, what if I get an apartment just down the street from me. So he found an apartment down the street, a little studio apartment. And he paid rent there 700 bucks a month, every month for seven months. American. And, <laughs> and was spent the night there five times. <laughs> but look what it did. It mm. showed me and it showed me that he could be responsible because that was a big thing for me. Wow. You know, and so then he's just like, I said, okay, well, why don't you just give me that? And then we can now, like, the we, can, we, can, we can work <laughs> it out now. But I knew, all right, he, he, you know, he's all right. And another thing was, I feel like in the first three or six months that you're in a relationship, you're still trying to impress each other. Right. So the real stuff happens afterwards. And so I can say 10 years later, we still hold those things. Like he still is like, I'm not a handyman, but I'll still... I'll do the dishes if you cook. Like it's all balanced, you know? And I think that's important to keep that. And a lot of times people just, that drops. Right. You know, and then people start feeling unappreciated and then people start feeling taken for granted. And then that's when wandering starts happening Mm. is when at home you're not feeling um, appreciated appreciated or, or, or whatever, you know, 
whatever feeling that you're having, that's when people start to go, okay. Wow. You sharing that, I think, made me consider the importance of patience. Mm -hmm. Because when he asked you to move in, it, it was a moment. It's like, damn, there's a lot of things that come to mind or reasons why you hesitate. Yeah. And because there's like a genuine love for each other, you know, expressing that patience, giving each other enough time to have the option of separate be having those separate lives right i think is, is so important that idea of patience allowed you the time to feel secure to fully commit into that next step of moving in together and it's an interesting thread i think that i've noticed through this entire conversation with you two is is that that thread of feeling secure and my partner makes me feel secure when I'm going on tour or I'm, I have a th you know, set to go to when I'm acting and I'm away from the family. That security thread I think is so important for new couples to really pick up on is expressing patience. You might want, yo, I want my girl to move in right now. Like that's my partner. But being able to give your partner the time, have that patience to allow them to go through what they need to to feel that sense of security adds value and builds that strength as a couple. Like that's, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. you said it. You said wow. it. You beautifully said, man. No, that's, it's so interesting. That's exactly too. what it was. It's Once great. I felt secure with him, right? I was like, okay, let's love each other. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and if and if I wasn't Bold. there, if I wasn't all there, I would have took that as a, an insult. Like, okay, mm. oh, you don't want to live with me. Okay, you know. But I, I was committed. I said, you know right. what, what if I showed you that I can go pay rent down the street? Mm. And I did for seven months. And like she said, I literally, I hated, I stayed there five or six times. But it was, but that was, the point was that she wanted to see that I'm kind of the kind of man that could take the responsibility. At the time, I think wow. I was staying in, in mom's garage. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't need to pay rent, you know, but she wanted to see that next level of a man. And to, to be honest with myself, I needed to be at the next level. You know what I mean? And so she yeah. took that out of me. You know right. what I mean? Whoa. People you you, you yeah. emphasizing that red cloud, I think really points out that dynamic of, of the sacred feminine of like having a, a woman in your life. If you trust yourself with that woman, I think it makes us better men. Yeah. And I've heard, I've heard the saying where it's like the more powerful the woman, the more powerful the man in that order. You know what I'm it saying? Like, be like yeah. being able to yeah. test you like that is, is a, is a, is in, interesting first of all, but your commitment to it yeah. because you're trusting her that that's an important decision that she needs to make for the relationship to work. So, whoa, you know, like that, all that stuff is clicking when you're sharing that I think is amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yes, man. Ooh. And it's like, I think the, just in closing to that loop, it's a common thread with Red Cloud is that in the beginning of the relationship on your first date eating pie together, he didn't even try to make a move. And he's, give, he's being patient. He's giving you that space that you need, that patient I, thread. I right? applied that celibacy thing you were talking about in a minor format, just in the first few dates to leave that space to get to know each other so that it's not all about that. I'm not like the other dudes. That's not gonna be the first thing I wanna do. I wanna get to love you know, your mind, know what you're all about you know yeah and and, and crystal <laughs> crystal would pick up if you were just faking it you know what i'm saying like she would pick that up and be like yo this dude's just flexing you know yeah. but, i was already on edge so yeah right exactly okay last question it's really you know just a, a fun way to wrap up but what are some of your plans for your future together as a couple but also individually me? Yeah. Sure, I'll go first. Um, well, uh, as for myself, uh, I'm st I still love rocking the mic. Um, I think just yesterday I was like, man, you know, I usually don't have time to, to put out too much music. I try to do what I can, which is what's also dope about having a kid. You figure mm -hmm. out what, you know, your space is now valuable. Your, right. your time is now valuable. So that little gap you get, you start really like, if I get a dope idea, it has to be during that time and you really stay committed. So um, I think that 
for sure, I'll, you know, more more Red Cloud music. I think the next album is called Hawthorne Henry. Mm-hmm. It just sounds powerful. Nice. So I definitely want to put out some solo stuff. Uh, definitely want to put out some more Lightning Cloud stuff. We're now, right now, we're both in the solo part of our career where mm. she's transforming into Crystal Lightning, the solo hip hop artist. Wow. You know, because she's uh, her whole career, she's been Lightning Cloud. You know, me and her, me and her. So her by herself without her tattooed boyfriend standing next to her <laughs> for the whole damn song. You know, it's going to be a whole new dope transformation and a whole dope, new dope chapter where, you know, it's my, it's my, my woman's time, my woman's show, you know what I mean? Like, let her get down, let her evolve, you know what I mean? So this, that's a really dope time in both of our relationships. Um, I have a cool little character that I work on uh, in Spanish. Uh, so I'm trying to flex my language. I'd like to learn more how to rap more in other languages, nice. uh, including Korean and including Nawa. And um, so I'm really getting into that. I'm creating a game. It's called Kringo. It starts with a K. And it's it's Cree Bingo. And it's it's gonna completely revolutionize, you know, gaming and involve culture so that we could save the language. Uh, and I'll be able to use that in, you know, Navajo, Navajingo. And now what? Uh, now we go and I'll get the black feet. I'll get as, as, as soon as we get all the tribes and all the languages is my goal and saving the language. So that's what I'm in love with right now. Besides nice. this woman is saving the language and creating a platform to where I and my son and others can, can pick up the language quick. And, uh, and putting out some music. I'm, I'm also an actor. I'm auditioning still. This is my coach right now. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'm usually zero typecast. I can play Thug A or Thug B, uh, but <laughs> I'm going to do the best I can. And uh, it's just I'm in love with it. And uh, yeah, just being a full-time daddy. Yes. How about you? Very nice. How about you? Got a lot Tri- going on. How about you, Trickster Season 2? <laughs> um, yeah, what well, Cloud mentioned, um, you know, working on some solo music, which is a, another creative outlet. It's, it's super fun. I love it. I love that I have his support. Um, season two of Trickster got green lit. So that'll be, it feels good to know that I got something in the bag, you know, it's because with this industry, especially the acting industry, it's like, you're only as good as your last gig. And then you got to hustle and hustle and hustle. And I just hope I don't have to go back to bartending. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, so season two, and then I just booked a guest star on this show called Hudson and Rex. So I fly to Newfoundland tomorrow morning and uh, work on that show for uh, two weeks, but um, always, always continuing to audition and work on my craft as far as that goes. My spare time, I work on music um, and full-time mommy. And I'm so having so much fun with that. I mean, just watching him grow and, and be um, a part of his little, his little self and his little growing every day. It's just amazing. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much what, and then together, I feel like um, our goal is to, I don't know if our base is going to go, is going to be here in Edmonton, but eventually within a few years, you know, we'll decide where we want to plant, you know, and buy a home um, together and, and start another chapter. I mean, going through these chapters with him has been just so much fun. We reflect on that sometimes is like the different chapters you know, and sometimes it's a little somber, but then we go, wow, now we're in this chapter and now we're in that chapter. And it just keeps on like growing, you know, um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. He's a fun, he's a fun dude to, to be with. She's also being modest. So today, uh, Trickster goes to the UK. Oh, so everybody in the UK is going to see Trickster. And then on January 12th, it comes to the States on the CW. So the CW just picked up Riverdale, Charmed, Flash, Batwoman, Trickster. So I can't wait till my people in the U.S. you know get to catch this awesome series. I mean, you know, we're so lucky here in Canada, you know, yeah. to have the first Native American show on prime time television, not just on you know the Native Channel or not yeah. just on whatever website. Like it's they gave they gave some Nietzsche's a chance and they hit a home run with this show. So facts. I'm I'm so proud of you know the team the the Trickster team. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm, I'm literally watching the trickster right now and it's all you are. It's solid. I had to wait for her, the whole series to come out. Cause I could not stand waiting 
for when it to come out. I got to binge that thing because it's yeah. like they're back to back. They're connected. So I've been diving deep into it right now. And I think I was talking to, I actually played it with, um, you know, my family the other day, Ooh. but I think it's, <laughs> it's like so awesome to see a series that doesn't necessarily have us in this painted in some stereotypical picture. And a lot of the comments that are coming out is like, yeah, that I like seeing, you know, actors and actresses that look like me or that I can relate to, you know what I'm saying? And to have the sci-fi element to it is epic. Mm -hmm. Integrating with the teachings, it's amazing to see that. So I really think that this is that paramount time for indigenous actors, actresses, to hear all the indigenous artists in the series, Snotty Nose Res Kids, um, Tribe Called Red, and how they splash that on the posters in the yeah. back. Yo, it's amazing. It's amazing. So again thank you so much congratulations to you both on all of your accomplishments it's been an amazing journey to hear your past to hear your present and then talk about your future you know i really want to express my gratitude for the time that you've been able to commit to make this happen to be here with us on this power couple podcast it's truly an honor and truly a blessing and i'm really grateful for your, both of your time to be able to be here so wash day and, and thank you again Thank you so much, brother. We love this. Uh, this, this interview was, it's different too. So that's really cool that you're able to do something like this and, uh, and put it out. We also love the music and, uh, can't wait to, can't wait to see where your career takes you, man. Over there, over there to the top. Yeah. Facts. I got some stuff cooking, so I'll definitely Woo! send that to you when it comes through. Nice. And, uh, I have to say this ha probably was one of my top two interviews, probably my favorite interview. This wow. was awesome. Burr, 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 burr. No, really, I loved the questions that you asked, and it's very rare that you get to talk about your love with someone like on that level. And your questions were just on point, and the way that you articulated everything back was like, "Bro, are you a therapist? Like, you should be." <laughs> very good, bro. Very you're so well. good, and you're so eloquent the way you speak. I just, I appreciate it, and it was, it was nice to be able to talk about it and reflect on you know everything that we've done together we forget about that sometimes and i think that's that's part of our journey together and so thank you for um thank you for uh for having us yeah it's really nice and you got that that sean evans nardwar vibe where you let the list you let the interviewer know that you're listening and you respond and then you hit the note and good transitions good job man keep it up we're fans of your show you know, big respect. That means a lot. And I'm just, I'm full of gratitude. So again, thank you both and all the best in your future and everything you got going on. And it's, it's just count the blessings every day. So again, thank you. Wash day. And hopefully we'll cross paths at some point. Hi, hi. Hi, hi, my man. Thank you. <laughs> Peace, brother. Love.